Professor, thank you for being here today. I'm really curious to understand your thoughts on some of the challenges CEOs are facing in organizations undergoing digital transformation. Yes, we've just done a survey uh, with CEOs all over the world, something like 500 of them replied. And they, we found quite a few very interesting findings. One that I personally found interesting and revealing is that whereas all of these CEOs, 100% of them said we've undertaken a digital transformation journey in the last five, 10 years, something like 80% of them, 82% to be exact, was, uh, said that they are dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with the progress of their digital transformation journey and with their success of their digital transformation journey. And, you know, we explored that a little bit as to why. Why are you not happy? And again, many issues came up. The number one was this issue about, uh, they said, we did not create enough urgency in the organization to change. And again, we said, why not? And it turns out that there are two ways to create urgency in an organization. I call it the correct way and the wrong way. And <laughs> guess what? the majority of these people ro use the wrong way to create urgency. And what is the wrong way? There's a lot of psychology literature on this. The wrong way to create urgency is by trying to scare people. It's by trying to say, oh, if we don't change, these bad things are going to happen to us. Or, oh my God, look at all the changes around us. AI, digital revolution, you know, uh, robotics, machine learning. Oh my God, oh my God, we need to change. Otherwise, you're going to go bankrupt. That scaring people, in other words, we know from psychology has a very short-term effect, but then people go back to whatever they were doing after a while and so on. That's the wrong way to create agency, and unfortunately, that's the, 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 the method that most CEOs use. The correct way is, first of all, you tell them of the negatives. If we don't do this, yeah, we're going to go bankrupt. But you don't stop there. You spend the majority of your time in giving people something positive to aim for. You say, look guys, we need to transform here. You know why? Because by transformation, we're going to achieve this and this and this. So you give them something positive to aim for. And more importantly, you sell it to them to win their emotional commitment to it. Now compare the two tactics. One is to scare. The other is to give people something visionary, positive to aim for, but you sell it to them. Which one is the easier to, for CEOs to take or for companies to take? I think scaring people. So they all do that and in the end it doesn't work. That's not the right way to create change momentum in an organization. And that is just one of the findings from our transformation journey. What's something else that you found in your findings? The other thing that uh, caught them by surprise was the fact that they said, we look at all the changes happening as a result of the digital disruption, and they said, okay, we need to do certain things. They develop an action plan and they put it in place. But then what happened was that as they were responding to the changes brought about by the digital transformation, lots of other disruptions started happening, like AI, like robotics, like uh, synthetic biology, like, you know. So they suddenly realized, wait a minute, we are responding to what happened so far, but we are not preparing the organization for the disruptions that are yet to really hit us. And unfortunately, in today's world, given the changes happening, you know, transformation is not just a one-off event. You don't respond and that's it. After a while, it finishes. Transformation is a continuous journey. You, you respond and then you respond again and then you respond. So the challenge for these uh, companies is primarily how do you set up the organization to engage in a continuous transformation journey to respond to whatever disruption hits you tomorrow, knowing full well that you don't know what disruption is going to hit you tomorrow. And that is the difficult thing that caught them by surprise. Almost like change fitness in a way, of ongoing course. change it, fitness. Exactly. It's not a one-off. You don't just go to the gym, spend six months, now I've finished my gym and now I'm set for life. It's a continuous process and the, it's the speed with which things change now that require that. One of the things that was strongly related to what Ricardo was asking about in the engagement of people is the sense of purpose and how people feel about what it is that they do and how they make a difference, both for their organizations and the world around them. Can you comment on that? Purpose is very important, especially given the changes we've seen and the new generation coming in, increasingly the younger people, if you ask them why do you want to work for an organization, sense of purpose is number one on their list. It's not about 
the money or about promotion or about security, sense of purpose. Why am I here? Is it just to maximize shareholder value? Come on. If the shareholder wants to maximize their value, let them come and work. Why should I be working? And so on. So they want something more. So purpose is definitely important. But my experience is that most purposes that companies develop are not really that useful. They are useless, in fact. And I try to understand why. Why are most purposes useless? They sound good. Well, my purpose is to save the world. My purpose is to make uh, you know, a better place for my children and country. They sound good. Why are they useless? And uh, the reason, the bottom line, is very simple. For a purpose to be powerful and effective, people must buy into it. They must buy into it at the, at, at the, in their hearts, not, at, not at in the brain, rational acceptance, in the hearts. They buy into it and they believe in it and they behave accordingly. But then, how do people buy into something? They don't wake up in the morning and they buy into a purpose, however good or sexy it may sound. They buy into it when we, as leaders in an organization, spend time and effort selling it to them to win their emotional commitment to it. Selling is much more than communicating. It's not enough to stand in front of people and say, guys, our purpose is to change the world. That's communicating. You haven't sold it to people. Now, there are some people that are very inspiring. Martin Luther King. And I say to people, to leaders out there, if you are as inspiring as Martin Luther King with words, yes, by all means, use words to inspire people for the purpose. But if you are not as inspiring as Martin Luther King, maybe you should use a few additional strategies and tactics to sell your purpose to your people, not just communication, but a variety of other tactics. It's a process. To sell to people, to win their heart, it's a process. And I always ask people, think of how long and how many strategies you use to win the heart of your husband or wife. You know, did it take you more than one date? Or did you go out on one date and at the end of it, oh, I'm so in love with you and let's get married and have many children? It never happened like that. It, it takes some time, it takes a lot of tactics on our part to win another human being's heart. It's the same with our employees. We need to think creatively and go beyond just communication to sell our purposes to our employees so that they buy into it. It's only when they buy into it that the purpose begins to have meaning and is powerful and it influences human beings.